Hey YouTube, it's Mitchell30. Haven't made a video for a while, so I'd like to make another one for you guys about uh, one of my most prized uh, World War II firearms that I own. Um, so this is a 1903 A1 United States Marine Corps Sniper, or other uh, otherwise known as the 1941 U.S. Marine Corps Sniper. This is a reproduction of the original uh, because an original United States Marine Corps sniper is extremely rare and extremely hard to find, which I'll talk about here in a bit. But uh, this is mine. <clears throat> this one, yeah, I just got finished up with a while ago. Um, it has a reproduction C stock on it. It is all USGI parts except for the stock, the mounts in the scope and the rings everything else is usgi um, this one's built off a of remington <coughs> excuse me a remington receiver and a remington barrel um, it is all milled parts which was would be correct for this particular rifle um, so it has a milled floor plate uh, milled barrel band and then a milled um, forward barrel band right here <coughs> it does have the scalloped front handguard that I scalloped out myself to make this uh, scope fit. And the rings fit on here. You can take the scope on and off with these dials right here. Um, this rifle is incredibly accurate. <laughs> I am thoroughly impressed with this rifle. Um, after I took it out to the range about a week ago, and I was using Hornady, <clears throat> Hornady match ammunition, 168 grain ELD bullet. Um, and I was getting sub MOA with it, um, at a hundred yards. And then I start, I shot out to 500 cause that's what the range allowed me to do that day. Um, and I was ringing steel <clears throat> like it was no problem. Um, and it was a little bit breezy that day, but, uh, yeah, this rifle is a attack driver. It's, uh, <clears throat> this rifle is way beyond its time. I will tell you that. Um, <laughs> I have a Savage 12. FV that I bought, you know, with the cheap synthetic stock on and everything, and I kind of went through it and <clears throat> got a better stock, glass bedded it, has a heavy target barrel. This rifle that you see in front of you right here is just as accurate. Um, <laughs> and it was made in 1942, at least this receiver and barrel were, which is pretty incredible. Uh, like I said, it is way above its time. Um, things just awesome. But <clears throat> Enough with that. The scope that is on it is a Hilux reproduction. It's a Malcolm USMC sniper scope um, reproduction of the Unertal 8 power. Um, it does have the adjustable turrets um, like the Lyman does. And then, uh, so this scope is really unique compared to like the 1903 A4 that I have previously shown you guys. The Marines had a totally different idea. Um, with precision shooting. I mean, that's what the Marines did. The snipers, <clears throat> scout snipers, they were precision shooters. Um, a lot of them competed in the national matches <clears throat> at Camp Perry. So they really didn't use Kentucky windage that much. Um, so if you look at the scope, the scope itself actually sits inside of this square box with the turrets on the outside. The scope is free floating see the scope moving around the scope is actually free floating inside those rings <clears throat> and when you fire the gun the scope stays in place and the rifle recoils and the scope will move forward just like so and after every shot you'd have to grab the scope and bring it back and set it up with that front ring there and that resets your eye relief and your focus on your scope gets it back into zero. Um, but like I said, the, the Marines were precision shooters, still are today. So instead of using Kentucky windage, they use these turrets on the side um, to dial in their dope, which is data, data on previous engagements. So they've used a certain type of certain type of round with a certain type of bullet, certain type of powder, and they have figured out Okay, at, for example, at 200 yards, it shoots two inches low, 303 inches low. That's, that's an exaggeration, but you get the point there. And they would dial in their dope 
with these turrets. <clears throat> and they would have that on a, on a card or have it memorized. And they would be able to dial in this scope out to, say, a thousand yards. And where they put the crosshairs, the bullet went, theoretically, if they were a good shot and there was no wind, things like that. Um, so that's kind of the difference between an o, <coughs> excuse me, a 1903A1 U.S. Marine Corps sniper and a 1903A4 that had a two and a half power um, <coughs> scope on it. So totally different mindsets there. And like I said, this this rifle is a tack driver. It's <laughs> in my eyes, it's it's the most gorgeous rifle I own. Um, and I've showed it to some people that don't know much about history in general. And they look at it as just like, oh, that's a, you know, it looks like a hunting rifle with a wood stock with a really weird looking long scope. Well, that's not what it is. It's, it's a precision gun made back in the forties or, or, or even earlier, most likely earlier if you have an original one. So <clears throat> I just want to talk a little bit about the rifle that you see in front of you here and also talk about kind of the history on these guys. So the... Nine, the model 1903A1 sniper, um, or the United States Marine Corps rifles, <clears throat> were made up of almost wholly from U.S. caliber 30 model 1903 national match and rifles U.S. caliber 30 model 1903 specials. Um, and these rifles were last, last were rebuilt national match rifles. And the records that I've seen show that some roughly 1,047 national match rifles <clears throat> used by the Marine Corps, Marine Corps, United States Marine Corps shooting teams, were in the Marine Corps inventory by early 1942. And according to Larry Reynolds, who has done a heck of a lot of research on this stuff, has... Uh, <clears throat> has found that their serial numbers range from around, excuse me, sorry, my dogs are barking. Serial numbers have ranged around from 900,000 all the way up to about 1,532,000 between 1918 and 1939, with the majority manufactured after 1927. Um, the last of the National Match Model 1903A1 rifles were manufactured in 1939, at the Springfield Armory. <clears throat> the model 1903A1 sniper U.S. Marine Corps rifle is described um, as a very, very accurate precision gun. Um, and I, I have found that with a reproduction that was put together. Um, these guns have a very cool history. And the majority of these guys were used in the Pacific theaters, obviously, because the Marines used them. And they did some stuff to these rifles that made them stand up, stand out accuracy wise. So, like the National Match rifles would go to a Marine Corps National Match armor. And the original ones had like a, a nickel steel bolt on them, and they would polish all the rails on the inside. They would lap and tune the bolt head and the, and the lugs and everything, make sure everything is perfect, almost perfect. Um, and then they would end up putting air gauge barrels on them or star gauge barrels. And a lot of the original ones will have on the bottom right here, they'll have a star stamped in at the bottom. This one doesn't obviously because it's a replication of one, um, but it would have a star stamped at the bottom. Not all of them have that because those barrels were replaced um, on some of them. But uh, originally they would have had an air gauge barrel with a star stamp there. Um, they would also have a national match butt plate. <clears throat> this one's just kind of a standard 03 butt plate. The national match ones had really rough stippling on the back. Um, it, so it would bite into your shoulder. Um, with your clothing when you're shooting it. And there was also a whole bunch of other things they would do. They would do trigger work to them. They would just get these guys <clears throat> as accurate as physically possible. And then they mounted up a uh, Lyman, or excuse me, a, a Unertal 8 power scope, um, kind of similar to the one that you see on this rifle. 
and it was you know it was state of our state of the art equipment that scope at the time and, and it served its purpose very well but as you guys probably know the marine corps back in the day and even into today still doesn't get the best of the best equipment so they're they they keep things so they had rifles from world war one and the national match shooting teams and they were like well we want to make this into a sniper rifle so let's put a eight power unertal scope on it um and they did and it worked fabulously and <clears throat> if you look at a lot of research and stuff this is probably one of the best sniper rifles in world war ii if not the best um at least in the united states and uh, what we we had back then and <clears throat> in my opinion it's better than I know I'm getting a lot of hate for this, but it's better than a K98 sniper. It is, hands down. Um, I've shot a lot of K98s. I have friends that own a real uh, K98 sniper and reproductions that they've made. This will outshoot those. It absolutely will. Um, in the right hands, obviously. <clears throat> but yeah, I just wanted to talk a little bit about this rifle, guys. And I'm super, super proud of it. Um, it's a really, really cool piece of history. And I wanted to have one of these for the civilian marksmanship program uh, vintage sniper competitions. <clears throat> Just like how I built my A03A4 that I have many videos on. I didn't make as many videos on building this guy. Uh, just because I didn't have the time to. But I really like this rifle. Uh, I really like my A03A4 as well. <clears throat> but this is a this is more of a precise shooting gun. It truly is. It's easier to shoot, obviously, because the scope you can see better. Um, it's easier to shoot at longer distances. You don't have to use Kentucky windage. You, you dial in your dope and you figure it out, and you put your crosshairs where you need them to be, and you pull the trigger, or squeeze the trigger, and the bullet theoretically goes to where those crosshairs were at when you squeeze that trigger. So it's just a different ideology, uh, extremely accurate weapon, really, really cool piece of history, extremely rare piece of history. If you have a real one of these, if you do, man, <laughs> good for you. Uh, that's amazing. Um, but anyways, guys, just wanted to kind of share the video or share this rifle with you. Um, and if you have any comments or questions, please leave them below. You're going to be kind of a, a dick like the last few videos I've put out. I just won't respond to you. I don't really care. I'm living my life. But I hope you guys are doing well wherever you're at. Take care of yourselves. I'll talk to you later.